While other first-person sword fighting games like Mordhau and Kingdom Come Deliverance have tried to sell themselves on the realism of their hitboxes or the high skill ceilings of their combat systems, Chivalry Medieval Warfare has always been unashamed to fall a bit more on the arcadey side. Its sequel, Chivalry 2, continues that tradition, and I think it's actually a better multiplayer experience because of that philosophy. There's still a lot of skill involved but it's easier to dive in and start getting some gloriously gory kills without feeling like you're a sheep surrounded by wolves. And that's how you build and keep a strong community. General Malric vowed to seize power and rid the land of weakness brought by birthright and blind loyalty. Chivalry 2 catapults you onto stylish, saturated battlefields with up to 64 players in objective-based team modes or a giant free-for-all. Masons! Capture that gatehouse! There aren't a ton of maps right now, but I was pretty impressed with the ones we have. Each has a good variety of objectives to attack and defend, exciting terrain and architecture, an effective mix of open areas and bottlenecks, and great overall pacing. Sure, there are definitely a few objectives that feel unbalanced at the moment. The bridge on Fallmire, for instance, I've only seen successfully taken by the attackers once in the dozens of times I've played it, but it's nothing that a few minor tweaks shouldn't be able to fix. Rather than making you build out a complex custom kit with all the exact weapons and armor you want, Chivalry 2 has 12 set classes divided into four archetypes, with four available at the start and the rest unlocked as you go. You can also unlock new primary and secondary weapons within each class, so there's a lot of meaningful progression to work toward. I was a little disappointed I couldn't just go crazy mixing and matching, but I soon found that there are kits to support just about every playstyle I could imagine, from a deadly crossbow sniper to a frenzied axe-hurling berserker. What now? I also admired that within each class, special abilities tend to focus on supporting your team rather than simply making you better as a single combatant. Even if you're not the best one-on-one -on -one fighter in the world, you can still make a world of difference in big encounters by blowing your warhorn and giving a hefty AoE heal to your side of the melee. And in another clever bit of design, you recharge these powers faster by doing things your class is good at and should be doing anyway, like getting kills with your charge attack as the Furious Raider, or blocking attacks as the Stalwart Guardian. The combat system is, of course, the core of everything, and with more than 30 hours under my belt, I'm loving it. It's not the most realistic medieval brawler I've ever played, but this is a power fantasy, not a documentary. The overall flow of it and the ways in which it limits how much an extremely skilled player can absolutely dominate the battlefield hit a sweet spot for me. Make no mistake, you can't climb to the top of the leaderboards by just blindly swinging a mace around. But the system for parries, riposts, and counters doesn't require godlike reflexes or extremely precise mouse movements to get the hang of the fundamentals. There's a high skill ceiling, but the difference between a pretty good player and a really good player is smaller than in a game like Mordhau, which I think is a smart decision. Bad and okay players are always going to outnumber the truly exceptional ones, and they need to still be able to have fun to keep a strong community. Even if you're the best played master in the realm, you need teammates to stand on the objective. It also doesn't feel too arcadey though, which is an issue I had with the first chivalry. No, go learn how to defend yourself. Personally, oh, I don't believe in it, but they tell me we're off the teach it. Aside from the very first couple of days, the servers seem to be holding up pretty well too. Getting into a match is lightning quick, thanks in no small part to the willingness to include a few bots to get those big 64 player matches off the ground. I've rarely experienced any major connection issues while playing for at least a few hours a day. The one thing I've found a bit lacking is the visual customization of your character. It's nice that you can play as a woman for the first time, but if you do, each class only has one voice to choose from and far fewer face options than the guys get. Also, a lot of these ladies look pretty weird. <laughs> there are some bizarre male faces too, but the difference in quality is pretty easy to see. At least there's a good variety of armor styles, heraldry, and weapon skins you could unlock with premium currency or in-game cash you get from leveling up. And rest assured, as far as I could find, there's nothing that's exclusively locked behind spending real money.
I am having a ton of fun with Chivalry 2. The maps, outside of a few balance issues, are a total blast. Everything from the shining armor to the soaring castle walls looks great, and there are a huge range of objectives to keep things interesting. Whether I'm swinging a sword or plucking away with a bow, combat hits that elusive sweet spot between accessible dumb fun and rewarding skill-based mechanics where the wheat is separated from the chaff. When you respawn and everyone around you is spamming the battle cry button as you rush headlong into certain death, you just know you're in for a rockin' time. I don't think I'll be putting away this sweaty coat of mail for a good while. For more, check out our reviews of The Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood and Hood Outlaws and Legends. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Strong men, like good steel, are forged in the fires of hardship.